what I'm going to do is walk through the various kinds of widgets that we have, ranging from some of the ones you may be familiar with, all the way to our, you know, the very possibilities to build your own widgets based on our API. So I'm going to start off with just an overview of what's possible, both with our free widgets as well as our, our pro widgets that come along with some of our packages. So we'll jump, jump right in. We'll start with probably our best known widget, which is called the Fan or the Feedback Tab widget. I'm going to use a number of examples here that will we'll bring this to light. So this is our help page. On our help page, we have just about all the widgets that we provide. So you can use, you can mix and match our widgets based on your needs. So starting with the feedback widget that you see over here on the left, it works in a pretty straightforward way. You, any user who, ha who has feedback to provide on a given page can click that tab and pull up the feedback widget pane, which itself is an iframe for those of you who are, who are technical. So this is actually a, a page, a small page that's served up within your page. And, uh, and so that allows us to provide really a, a full array of functionality without you having to do anything other than drop the embed code in. So within this pane, users can, can share ideas about how to improve your product. They can ask questions, pose a problem, and, and uh, submit praise, all those types of things. We also provide uh, suggested topics that have to do with context of the widget. Now, the idea behind this widget was, while many of you have communities that you can redirect your customers into, that's a specific context. It's an immersive community, and there are a lot of reasons to direct your customers over into those communities. But more often than not, customers are doing something important on your service or your, your website when they, they may have a question or want to share some feedback. So we want to get them into and out of that feedback sharing or that Q&A process in that context. And uh, so that's what the feedback widget is for. One of the things that is possible then with these feedback widgets is to understand context. So in this case, we, this is just a, a, a general feedback widget that applies to all of Get Satisfaction. In the case of Kitty Care, which is an e-commerce site out of the UK that sells baby gear and kid gear, they've actually embedded feedback widgets into the buying experience. So uh, down here with, with these uh, some toolbar that they allow people to submit product reviews and service reviews, they, they actually have a default option to, to uh, ask the community about the product. And so if you click on this, you'll actually get a widget that's specific to that product. And so now when the user submits a, a question, it actually gets tagged with that, that product information we're stalling out here. But I want to give you a demo of how you can create your own product-specific widget. The widget can be created from your admin section in an area called widget. Uh, as you can see here, it's your company name slash admin slash widget also available from the toolbar over here. On the configuration page, you can create any of the widgets that I'll be showing you here today. The one at the top here is the feedback tab widget. If you unfold the configurator, you'll see a variety of options. By selecting the options that you want, you'll be able to take some code that we provide and drop this into your website and have the widget that you've designed. In this particular case, we have all the options. This is the pro widget configurator. So I want to create a widget that, ironically, is about the feedback widget. So I can drop this into a help page about the feedback widget and, uh, and collect Q&A and, and feedback about it. Yeah, I might decide that uh, what I want is not so much feedback or ideas about how to improve the product. I want to allow for Q&A around the feedback widget. So I select the default type as question. Um, I can then select how I want that, that tab itself generates the, the overlay, that, that pane. I can select where I want that place. I can have that on the left, the right, the bottom, or I can hide it and actually add a link anywhere on the page. In this particular case, I'm going to leave it on the left. I can set the, the tab color, which defaults as a, a dark gray, but I can, I can select any other color. I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit to show that I can. I can make the tag specific, meaning I can auto-tag any topics that are posted via the widget with a, with a specific tag. Um, this is really helpful if, for instance, you want to understand where that, that feedback is being provided. You can actually tag this with a URL, with a, a, a release number, anything that might be useful for organizing the, the feedback or Q&A that comes out of this. So you can, you can actually automatically organize your content based on the tag. And then if I wanted to visually customize the widget, I can, I can add a, a link to CSS file. And I'll give you an example of that in a little bit. And some of you, if you're web developers, you know that Internet Explorer, it can behave differently. So we have provide a separate CSS file for customizing for Internet Explorer. Let me allow you to just set the total number of, of topics, of suggested topics that will appear inside the widget. So I'm going to actually increase this to five. And we, uh, we support SSL if your system requires SSL. So then after I've selected my parameters, I update my code, and then select inside the text area and copy that. I created a little HTML page to demonstrate this. I'm going to just paste in a JavaScript, my embed code, 
which as you can see here, contains the various parameters that I've selected. And I'm going to save that. And here's the HTML page for I've embedded the widget. Now if I reload that, you can see the feedback tab appears here. And now if I select that, you can see this is a, a feedback widget that's now specific to conversations about the feedback widget itself. See, it's reflected here in the title, or here the suggested topic are about the feedback widget themselves. And so this allows you to have a great deal of specificity about the widget as you embed them within your site. So you can have a separate feedback widget for every product that you sell. Next, I wanted to give you an example of the feedback page widget. The feedback tab operates under the assumption that you want it to be hidden until a user has a question or has some feedback to share, and that they would click the, uh, the tab to render the overlay. In many cases, for instance, on a help page, you may want that the ask a question box to appear without the user having to do anything. So in this case, livebooks.com, they've actually embedded the feedback tab right in, into this page. So you can see here the, the, the feedback area is embedded right in the page, and so the user doesn't have to do anything. It just provides the ability to, to trick out your help page or your contact page with this functionality. And now I want to talk about the search widget. The search widget allows you to embed search functionality in any given page. So back to our own help section. We've actually you know, embedded the, the search widget right here in a, in a prominent place. So now the of our customers who come along and has a question about how to do something, for instance, I'd say, how do I reset my password? And it uh, automatically produces results right there in the page that have to do with my, my question. So that one is pretty much as simple as that. I'll give you an example of, of how we configure this, very similar to the feedback widget. In the cases of search, we provide many of the same options. You can actually constrain your search widget to a specific product, just like I showed. You can also constrain search to a specific topic type. Uh, in this example here, I'm going to make one again constrained to the feedback widget, only want to show questions. I don't, I don't necessarily want to show results for all the problems that people have had. Um, and again, I, I could constrain this to a specific tag as well. So I might want to limit this to just things tag FAQ, for instance, because I have a policy of tagging things FAQ that I think are particularly good answers. That allows me to curate that search experience. Um, again, I can set the, the total number of topics and I can then update my code. We provide two different ways to embed this. Unlike the feedback widget, which is an iframe, the search widget is provided as JavaScript and the JavaScript interacts with our API and then delivers the result. So we have uh, one version that is really quite stripped down that will adapt to the look and feel of your website. The other version has CSS included so that you can very easily style every aspect of the search widget. So I'll, I'll go ahead and grab that and then go back over to our little test page here. I'm going to get rid of the feedback widget for the sake of code cleanliness. I'm going to drop in my, my code. For the feedback tab widget, you can drop the code in at the bottom of the page and it will render the, the feedback tab where it's supposed to. In the case of the search widget, the simple thing to do is to drop that in the in your code exactly in the flow where you want it to appear. So here I've dropped it into the bottom. So that's it. But I'm going to move it up a bit and put it between the two paragraphs so you get the idea. Then go back to our test page, reload it, and then you can see I get a generically styled search box. Now I can, I can do a search, is SSL supported, can you, and as you can see I get 10 results as I configured that have to do with the widget. I didn't have to ask specifically about the widget. The, the search is constrained to the widget, so those topics are mapped to uh, the widget. You may have a question about what, what can I customize in the search results, you can customize anything here. So um, because it's all just JavaScript and uh, HTML and CSS. So you can hide text that you don't want to appear. Uh, you can turn off the bullet. And so if we go back to the example over here on, the, on our help page, you can see we've styled this quite a bit. We've styled the, the box that appears. We've removed a lot of the, the icing around it. And now if I do a search, you can see we've made, we've done it in the form of an overlay box and the bullets really made it match the look and feel of the rest of the page. Moving on, topic list widget. So the topic list widget is our simplest widget, and it does exactly what it says it does. It, it produces a list of topics uh, about whatever you want it to be about. So here in this, on this particular page, we have several topic list widgets. I'm going to focus on the one over here because this is uh, pretty generic. It's These are topics that are coming from our developer community. So if you have multiple communities, you can mix and match these uh, widgets as well. So on our help page, we actually are, are pulling from two different communities. Our main community, general interest, get satisfaction community, and our developer community. So here I've taken, created a, a topic list widget uh, that is delivering two topics with both the title and the description. So I'll show you how to build that. Okay, so again, on the configurator page, get the code for it. I can show topics that are constrained to, uh, to nothing, or rather you can see alt topic, um, or constrained to a product or a tag. You can show, again, just like the search widget, based on a, a specific topic type. Actually, in this case, I'll, I'll show ideas. And I can list, I can order the topic list based on activity. So the most act active, or the most recently active topics will appear first. I can show them based on uh, how new they are, or if they're unanswered, they have no reply. So you can assemble a, a widget 
that's designed to solve a certain problem or to evoke a certain behavior in your customers. Then I can establish whether or not I want a summary. So in this particular case, I wanted a, a, a short summary. And um, you can assemble the number, or you define the number of topics right here. Now, while there are three numbers listed here, you can actually override these and, and add any number. So I'm going to just give it a three, and I'm going to edit that in the code. So now I'm going to update the code and JavaScript here. Open up. I'm going to get rid of the previous widget and add this widget instead between the two paragraphs. As I mentioned, you can override the, the number of topics. So I'm going to override, as you see here, um, where it says limit. Limit equals three. I can say limit equals two. Save that and come back over to our test page. Reload it. As you can see, I got the two topics that I asked for unstyled. Interestingly, I'm not seeing the the, uh, the excerpt. So I see. I go back here and I realize, oh, I thought I'd set it to show a summary. I'm going to update the code and fix that by repasting that code in here. So. Again, it doesn't look beautiful because I haven't styled it, but as you can see, um, and of course, I overread the, the number again. So from, from that ugly version to the, the beautiful version on our help page, really is just a matter of some simple CSS changes. Sometimes people say, I want to customize this more than your configurator allows. And of course, this is why we make our API available. What we've done here on our own help page, the topic widget, list widget over here, is we've actually built our own custom topic list widget. Because our, our standard topic list widget doesn't include things like status and and user information. So we actually built a simple widget, which I'm happy to share with you now. I know some of you may not be code literate, but this is as much code as it took to you know, plus some CSS for styling to, to generate this, this widget over here, which as you can see is quite a bit customized relative to the standard one. Um, the magic of this, our API, just to give you an example, um, when I type in that, that string, I get back a response from our API, which has all the information needed to um, to populate a widget like I just showed. So I, well, I know this looks like a lot of data. You can't make sense of that. I don't expect you to read it. The point is, that data is then pulled into this small bit of JavaScript, then laid out in the form of a widget like this.